In today's episode, I will show you how we can change from asynchronous execution to synchronous execution. So a simpler way is asynchronous execution uh, is where you're using then and catch and that will be running in the background, while synchronous execution will not run the next line of code until it's finished. So let's dive in. Get a free full month of Skillshare and stream more than 18,000 online classes on subjects like design, business and tech. After a while, if you feel like this isn't for you, you can always cancel a subscription and not pay anything. So don't wait, try it out now. The link is in the description. So first off, we will create a body, which will hold the two raised buttons. So let's have a column with children and raised button. So this raised button will have a on tap and a sh child. So the child will just be a text of then catch, for example. And we will have the on press to null first. Create another one, call it a sync await. So let's put them in the middle and stretch them out. So the main axis alignment, oh, not in there, there main axis alignment, I set main axis alignment to center so we can center them in the middle and then have the cross axis alignment and stretch them out. So now we have two buttons so let's first create our then and catch method. So let's print that we have started the method and just add this to don't pressed. So if we press this catch, we can see that method is called. So let's start off with calling a future. Uh, I will just use a future delayed because I don't have any HTTP to try on for this tutorial. Uh, so this will just simulate HTTP call. And let's say that it takes two seconds to run. So we also have two more things. So the first one is when it's completed, run this. And when it has failed, run this. Okay, so these two have to go somewhere, right? So the usual way of doing this is to have a then function. And because this is not returning anything, we'll just have a empty return statement. And then have a catch. Which will just return the error. So this, this uh, future delayed is completed when we are inside this uh, scope right here. And it will have failed when we are inside there, right? So here we can have a, another print called completed. And inside here we can have a print called failed with the error. So this won't actually call any catch error because it's just a delayed function, but that's just for showing how you would do it with, for example, HTTP or getting some from a server. There we go. So if we run this now, we can see that we have a then and catch. So it started and then it completed. So, uh, the painful thing about a then and catch is that if you want to run multiple then and catches, for example, if you have this future right here, and when this is completed, you want to run another one, right? So asynchronous programming. So first you run a method, then you run b method, and then c method. And b can't be started before a is complete. So you want to run, for example, another one inside here. 
So you can see right off the bat that this get this get gets really complicated. Complicated. You can also chain multiple then events, um, but that also becomes pretty hard to read in the end. So I will show you another way of doing this. So this function will be a future void. And let's call it async await. So what we have to do now is that we have to add this um, right here. So this is tells us that inside this method we, we are going to await on something. So what I mean with await is that, for example, this future delayed takes two seconds to run. So after those two seconds, we want to do something else. And that will be printed completed. So let's just take this future delayed again. And take this completed. And take this started. So if we would run this. And actually import the sync and await. There is one mistake we have. So the first mistake is when we did it up here, we had a then. So the then just told us that once those two seconds has elapsed, we will run the complete method or complete, yeah, print method. Uh, and we can do the same by just calling a await. So await will just tell us that don't run in, don't run any code below this before this future is completed. So if we try that again, we can see that it's a delay here. So the delay is two seconds. Uh, but you may ask that now here we have this catch error and we don't have any way of checking errors right here, right? So what we can do or what we should do is have a try and catch. And if you don't, or if you have not used try and catch before, try and catch is just a way of try running this code right here and if there's something that fails we go to catch so inside this catch we will do the same print for the error and if we run this we can see started and completed which works so this is a very good way of using futures and handling those with the await and async. So for example, if we want to have or call another future function after this, we can simply call another one after that. So let's say we have complete the first, complete the second. So it becomes a lot more readable just to have it in a single line. So if we call a sync wait, we can see that we started, completed first, and then completed second. And that was for, that one was fast because I said to do one second instead. So I hope this makes sense. If you have any questions, please let me know in the comments. And uh, I have also a Facebook page. It's also linked in the description. Uh, I will also link this project down in GitHub. And all the information and everything will be in the description. So I hope you liked the tutorial. Uh, subscribe to the channel, like the video if you liked it, and I will see you in the next tutorial.